This is the biggest local tannery in Africa. So many people from European country used to visit us and use so many things from us. There are so many different types of skin, goat skin, cobra, crocodile. All we are working, all we are doing, we are turning it in this place. This is Majimar Kofawambai in Kano State, northern Nigeria, one of several tanneries in the states where leather from animal skin is produced. Nigeria is a major supplier of leather to European and Asian markets, with the Nigerian Economic Summit Group projecting that the industry has the potential to generate over $1 billion by 2025. While much of the leather produced by the country's tanneries comes from animals such as goats and sheep, what many people don't know is that several species protected by local and international laws, like pythons and crocodiles, are also involved in the trade. In 2022, my colleague Abisola Owolawi visited tanneries in Kano State where she observed that there is a significant demand for exotic animal skins. My trip to northern Nigeria, particularly Kano, where the big tanneries are, was, I would say, extremely eye-opening in terms of the wide variety and volume of uh, endangered species that are being traded and tanned for, for trade with commercial luxury brands. Now, there are a few reasons for that, uh, thinking about it from an economic perspective. Um, in terms of the exact exotic skins, these are so much more in high demand than the goats and uh, sheep cross leather. And that's an economic, immediate economic motivation for the tanneries to want to spend more time and resources in sourcing the more exotic skins, as that's what's in, in high demand. But when we look at the education and sensitization around the um, ecological implications of these actions, there is very little to none, especially when we are looking at the more subsistence um, areas, the more subsistence focused uh, tanneries like the Majima Kofa Wambai in this regard. It is feared that if the hunting of these reptiles for commercial use continues, this could eventually drive them to extinction. This local tanner says species already on the verge of extinction, including big cats like lions, are also tanned here. They normally kill lion. They bring the skin for that lion to Kano. And they bring it here for doing work. After, after we are finishing working for that skin for lion, they normally sell it about 300,000, 500,000 for each leather for lion. They normally kill tiger, cheetah. They bring it here. Experts say there are fewer than 50 lions left in Nigeria, meaning they might become extinct if no urgent actions are taken to protect them. Conservationist Dr. Matthew Dore says it is the responsibility of individual states in Nigeria to update and implement laws that protect wildlife. When Nigerians go to hunt, because most of the states lack an enabling law that makes it possible for them to manage these species of animals, you find that the states don't know what population, first of all, they don't know what species are available, they don't know the population of the species that are available, they don't know the breeding season, they don't know when the animals breed. The states are supposed to have functional wildlife departments one way or the other, either standing alone or in departments of forestry. There are laws existing. Any state that does not have a law should go back to either 1965, when we still had Western Nigeria, Eastern Nigeria, Midwest and Northern states, you will find that they all had laws. So it is the duty of the states to update these laws in consonance with the current realities of the ground. According to the World Wildlife Fund, 
global wildlife populations have experienced a staggering decline of approximately 69% since 1970. Despite Nigeria lacking sufficient wild populations, the presence of porous borders and inadequate law enforcement creates an enabling environment for traders to smuggle the skins of protected animals to Kano from neighboring countries. This illicit trade in endangered species becomes intertwined with the leather industry, posing a significant threat to the preservation of wildlife. People from Cameroon, Cameroon imported this cotton, imported this, this um, skin to Nigeria. This one is cobra, that one is snake. There are some, this one is a snake. The fashion industry is a trillion dollar industry and Nigeria's leather trade has strong ties with certain countries in the European Union. According to the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Italy and Spain are the primary destinations for Nigerian leather, accounting for 71% of total exports. All shoes that people are wearing, if that shoe is an Italian made, just we are the one who finishing that leather in Nigeria. in Nigeria to export it to Italy. The EU wildlife trade regulations prohibit the import, export and trade of certain species listed under the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. So EU laws should play a crucial role in regulating and protecting endangered wildlife as under these laws, the import and export of certain animals are strictly regulated, with a focus on sustainable and legal wildlife trade. Yet, evidence suggests that products from CITES protected species are continuously making their way into the European market. Several fashion brands have been exploring alternatives to animal leather, such as Fury Lifestyle, a company co-owned by Tamunosaki Romeo who use vegan leather for their products. I use vegan leather because, to be very honest with you, it's easy to source. And um, it's really soft, it's very flexible. And when we thought about what it really takes to get the real leather done, the processes from artisans and you know the chemicals involved and all that, we figured using vegan was um, a better option for us. Vegan leather has witnessed a surge in popularity as a cruelty-free alternative to traditional animal leather, with a rising demand within the fashion industry. Although traditional animal leather continues to dominate the market, the growing popularity of vegan leather signifies a significant shift in consumer preferences. However, it's important to note that vegan leather also presents its own challenges. It is commonly produced using materials such as polyvinyl chloride or polyurethane, both derived from fossil fuels such as crude oil, natural gas or coal, and taking centuries to decompose. If you look at both sides of it, the vegan leather aspect of it, you have plastic, you have petroleum being used. And the flip side of it, you have, you know, the livestock being killed and, you know, you have to get the right animals with the right skin and all that. And then the processing involved in it. So um, as a whole, when you think about it, no matter how eco-conscious your production process is, it's still going to have some sort of environmental impact. But I must also point out that the fashion community is moving and veering towards using vegan plant-based leather. So we have companies using um, Pinatex, that's a form of plant-based leather. And yeah, I think uh, in a couple of years, we'll see people, you know, growing and becoming conscious of the kind of leather that they use. If the fashion industry continues to exploit Nigeria's protected wildlife without significant change, the consequences could be devastating. Snakes are a sanitary inspectors of the environment. If you leave snakes out of the ecosystem, the first thing you will see is overpopulation by rodents. And the snakes are probably not enough to keep the rats in check. The same thing happens in the aquatic system where crocodiles are supposed to remove weak Ungerly fish 
that should not transfer their genes to the next generation. By implementing stricter regulations and enforcing existing laws, Nigeria can ensure that the trade in protected species is eliminated, while supporting sustainable practices that preserve the country's natural heritage. Collaborative efforts between the government, fashion brands and local communities can foster responsible sourcing, innovative alternatives and education about wildlife conservation. Only through these measures can Nigeria's leather industry continue to thrive, creating economic opportunities for all, while safeguarding the future of its invaluable wildlife. Leila Johnson Salami, Arise News.